lovely fine wood chip. Beautiful. Since I took all the mypec up from under the paths, it's very difficult now to separate the, the path from the bed. So we had a, a wood chip delivery a couple of days ago, but the, for me the chips were just too big. Uh, I don't like really big lumps of wood chip because every time I turn one of them over on the soil or in the paths, there's slugs or slug eggs under them. So I don't get that problem if the chip is really fine. I also just think that the, the paths and beds look so much nicer with some new wood chip down. I could be wrong, but I like to think that the slugs would, would prefer not to cross this, uh, this is the land I conifer pine wood chip. So I think that the slugs won't like crossing this because it's all spiky and loose. So it may stop the slugs transferring themselves around the allotment. And if I can confine them more to the beds, then I can use the slug nematodes that I'm making to sort of try and get the numbers down because they're a real problem on here, the slugs, as our wireworm. I've just put my carrots in this bed yesterday. The first sowing of carrots. Speak of the devil. Look what is there. The wireworm. Speak of the devil, eh? Hundreds of these, if not thousands of them things on this allotment. Yeah, so I've just put my carrots in here. Um, simple, simple job really. That, that's a little single row of carrots. I think I put six varieties in. All I actually do is just scrape a little trench like that with my fingers. Sprinkle the seed in as thinly as I can. And then I actually scrape this soil off the surface and sieve it. That's why it's this fine tilt, and then I just cover the seeds up with that sieve compost. Uh, and that is it. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's eight rows of carrots in here. Six different varieties. Two shone. A couple of rows of two shone because I like them. Um, I think there's a couple of purple ones, a yellow one, a few different coloured ones. There's a Nance, a row of early Nance on the end. So, yeah. Got the carrots in, keep the sheet over them to keep the soil moist, should be good. The old rye is really going for it now, look at it go. I really don't want to cut this down but um, these were the three potato beds. I'm just going to leave it a few more weeks in the bed, let it put a bit more growth on. So I've now converted this bed into the second early potato bed when this purple, purple sprouting broccoli comes out. I put my first early potatoes in this bed. 26, I think, 25, 26 swift seed potatoes in this bed. I planted them on uh, St. Patrick's Day. This will be a couple of weeks yet before these start showing. I'll keep this mypec on top of them. That's, uh, that's like a bit of a waterproof sheet in there. Just to keep the worst of the rain off, just the soil's very wet so I want it to just dry out a bit. I'll just put a bit more plastic on this end as well. I'll show you the potatoes in the polytunnel. These swift potatoes have been in about a week now. You can just see there. It's got just first signs of, of chit in there. Chits, little chits coming up. Now in contrast to that, it's a variety called Lenorma there which we may, do make a lovely jacket potato. And my little peas there, well, they're doing so well. Look at the growth on them, they're beautiful and even. In contrast, these potatoes, which I think are estimate, I'm not actually sure what they are, they could well be estimate. Um, these were in the conservatory for two weeks on top of the heated floor, and that is the difference just a couple of weeks makes on a heated floor. Little onion sets, uh, they're, they're doing quite well. I've had to put them into these pots. I did have them in a little module tray. Yeah, I had the sets in these little odd module trays. So I just filled them with compost and I literally just poked them in. So there was just the base of the bulb in the soil. Um, and I was hoping I could just transplant them straight outside out of this. But what they did, they grew so fast in here that the roots started turning back up. 
so I've had to put them on. I suppose there's no there's no really cold weather in the forecast for the next month ahead, but you just never know. So I don't really want to put them out just yet. I want to wait a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. And the root, there's no sign of root in here yet. I only put these in about three days ago. So I think they'll, they should be fine in there for at least two to three weeks now. And then we can get them out. I ended up moving the big storage bin that was here. It's just there to your left. It's now been all felted and waterproof properly. Um, and I've put the base down for this little coal frame and I've used some old scaffold boards and painted them and that's going to be sort of this height at the front with that pitch roof on it there and uh, at this sort of height now, more or less waist height it should be fine this for growing some peppers in this summer because it will be lovely and warm in here and it'll hold the heat at night a little bit well, a lot better than the polytunnel will so I just need to get on with that. Uh, the roof will be sort of down from there somewhere. Which is nearly, uh, nearly four foot there in height at the back. I've just been busy today doing that wood chipping really. A few other bits and bobs. Collecting slugs from under all the boards that are around the site. That's where you see bits of old scaffolding boards and planks on the beds. Every morning when I come, I turn all the boards over, collect all the slugs. They got to go into a container, which has got some water in the bottom and a few sprout leaves and cabbage leaves. Um, and each slug has actually got a few little nematodes on it. When you get a big cluster of slugs living together in a container with moisture, the nematodes breed like crazy and eventually kill the slugs. So as soon as you see all the slugs dying in the container you know the nematodes are really active you then add that liquid sieve the liquid put it in a watering can and water the ground and it puts the nematodes into the soil then where they can seek out the slugs when the slugs start moving around and that's i'm busy doing that at the moment because i'm just trying to get on top of this horrendous slug problem i've got between the slugs and the wire worms I tell you the wire worms are are just destroyers of potatoes. They fill them with holes. I put a clip in here of uh, Charlotte potatoes that were really heavily attacked with the wireworms. Luckily the Charlotte potatoes, they didn't suffer, they did store okay, but they're just unsightly and you, you end up wasting a lot of potato, cutting all the damaged little holes out, you know. I'll show you what I'm doing to try and alleviate the problem a little bit with the wire worms and I need to get on top of that this week and make some more of these. What you can do to gauge the extent of the wire worm population in your soil is you can make these little sacks or bags and put wheat in them and as the wheat starts to germinate it gives off carbon dioxide which the wire worms can sense and they head towards the carbon dioxide source and they start chewing on these roots and they start chewing on the stems and you can see this wheat has been in nearly a week well about five days now and it's starting to germinate and I pulled this one out this morning and I actually found three wire worms in this, in this on top of the net this morning so already the wire worms are sensing this wheat and there is a scale, farmers do this to gauge the wireworm problem in the soil when if they're growing potatoes because the supermarkets won't buy potatoes that are full of wireworm holes. If you get one wireworm per trap in an area, the size, a square metre area, that one wireworm is equivalent to I think 20,000 wireworms per acre of ground. Now I've already found three wireworms in that and that sort of a metre so that would be equivalent already to 60,000 wireworms per acre I'm not sure what acreage of land I've got here in total I've got 22 beds which are 26 foot by 4 foot they're just split with the path down the centre that's all but that's the area I'm growing in plus the polytunnel etc um, so someone can probably work out what sort of 
percentage of an acre that is um, so you can see that by just having three wireworms in this this morning there's going to be a massive amount of wireworms on this ground and as I said it's because this ground has been derelict for so long empty weedy the click beetles have come in and they have thrived I've got to actually I've, I've actually got a clip here of the click beetles and the wireworm which I'll put in for you and these were some that I found yesterday when I was hunting for slugs. There are around 40 species of click beetles in the UK and they're so called because they flick their abdomen, they click, uh, so they can get back on the feet. They lay between 100 and 300 eggs and they take four to six weeks to hatch. The wireworms you can see here, they can travel up to 12 feet in the ground in 24 hours and they live in the soil for four years. You can see that guys, uh, this is the soil temperature now in the polytunnel 12.5 and the air temperature up here is 25.7 and that's with the vents open so springs are springing. Right, what I've got here guys is a mixture of wood chip, two year old wood chip and um, some soil from the allotment. The soil came from holes I dug when they excavated some soil to, to put some ericaceous compost in for the blueberries and I've just mixed that together and what I'm going to do is a bit of an experiment. So I'm going to give these Charlotte potatoes, which are a second early, I'm going to try and give them a little bit of a jump. They're going in the ground outside, but I'm going to give them an extra, hopefully, couple of weeks by sort of doing some partial growth on them in these buckets. I want 12 pots, so that's three rows of Charlottes, which will be going into the ground. What I'll do is I'll bring you back when these start sprouting and as soon as the roots start poking out the bottom we'll get them in the ground which is probably only going to be two or three weeks away now. I was hoping for another harvest of purple sprouting today but this there's really there's not there's not really that much on. I had a harvest two days ago oh it is absolutely beautiful this stuff in fact it's just gorgeous eating raw. Really distinctive sweet flavour. I absolutely love this. For the ground it ties up and the amount of time it's in the soil it's probably not worth growing but when you get these little spears at this time of the year the taste is just fan absolutely fantastic you know and for that alone that alone they are worth growing. I absolutely love them. I had a plateful two nights ago. Oh steamed for a couple of minutes then coated in butter and salt it's just a meal on its own so that is me and my purple sprouting broccoli signing out look sunshine <laughs> oh my god the sky is blue not a chemtrail to be seen thanks for watching thanks to my patrons i'll see you in the next one guys